either Valentine or your future husband. <laughs> Bro, stop it. I don't, I'm not trying to get my ass beat tonight. Oh la la. All right, so I'm Allie at Real Femme Sapien on Instagram and TikTok, and I met Valentine Valentine on TikTok. Hey, my name is Valentine at Valentine Fitness Red Pill, and I met this wonderful young lady because 2021, and she made the first move. To make it more clear, because I feel like as soon as this phrase is said, then many women are automatically like oh what's wrong being a feminist huh huh you don't want equality to know like he means a modern feminist like one of those you know toxic you know su superiority preaching saying main ain't shit type of feminist like those are the types we're talking about when we say a feminist i mean if you look at britain i mean only seven percent of women identify as a feminist so when we're talking about feminists we mean like modern feminism and not many women are really on board. I'm not here for the like, men are less feminism. Yeah, they can kick rocks. And I don't, like any of my guy friends, oh yeah, I'm with a feminist. I'm like, okay. So she literally thinks you're oppressing her, but you're gonna pay for that, that meal. It sounds like they're getting played. I think that's partially true. I think it's you either rejected them or you friend zoned them. Many young women. They are there's that immaturity aspect where you know they want something something exotic something interesting something to keep them on their toes so they rather go for like you know the the assholes the bad boys who you know who treat them badly but you know they are at least interesting and you know exciting and unpredictable as opposed to the nice guy who you know treats them well but they're not they're very predictable and they're not very interesting to be around there's you know gentlemen who are nice and you know care for you but are also not so simpy where it's like they put you on a pedestal and it's like oh my god you're my queen i'll do anything for you just tell me <laughs> one of the downsides of a nice guy is he makes it seem like he has nothing better going on in his life and the woman is like his the only thing that matters the only thing in his life mm -hmm. and that kind of also one of the things that kind of throws off women is like, you know, they want some guy, you know, has something else going on in his life and, you know, has probably ambition or has hobbies and stuff like that. So that's why many guys, you know, one of many of these pickup artists, they preach, don't respond to, oh, to a woman quick. Like, don't, like, as soon as she texts, you text back quickly. Like, no, take your time, take an hour, take a couple hours. And, you know, that's not about being toxic. I mean, that basically you know, reflects and shows that you are a man who has other things going on in his life and he won't, he doesn't have time to focus on you and to, you know, quickly check his text. Like, oh my gosh, she, she's texting me, text back with you. No, he has other things going for him. Mm -hmm. When he has the time, he'll text you back. I am the one, the way Hours can go by. Sometimes I don't even see him until he walks through the door. <laughs> oh, so, man. I mean, if he's not texting me back, yeah, it, it's it's totally okay to have boundaries. Maybe he's busy. Maybe he's working. Also, maybe he just doesn't want to be up your butt. I mean, that's an option. Nobody likes a clingy guy. Nice guys seem like they are trying to get into your pants by being nice. That's why I find male feminists so suspect. Because you're not like actually trying to invest anything. You're just like, I'm going to hope that if I'm really nice and I give her compliments that it's going to be enough. And that's weird. Because if it was like that, then I would be a lesbian. What do you mean by that? Usually nice guys, they're not genuinely nice. Like yes. they're nice in the attempt to get like some kind of sexual gratification. Like, hey, I was nice to her. So that means she's going to give me sex, right? <laughs> like, no, that's not a genuine nice guy. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of a misogynistic statement but at the same time it is true for some women especially if they're going to like a very big state college hold hold the door to sex and men hold the door to relationships so if a woman has a high body count i mean all she, a woman has to do is just open her legs you know and a, a man has to actually you know work for it and actually you know either be attractive enough or have be suave enough to convince a woman to, to do it so when people talk about oh why is there this double standard of like a high body count for man and woman because 
there's a difference. A lot of these lost girls, they end up going to college and they don't know what to do around all these attractive <clears throat> men. Absolutely lose it. Because I remember walking on a college campus being like 18 I'm like, oh, they're all hot. Male attention is intoxicating. And <laughs> it, it absolutely is. I think, you know, there's been times in my life and I'm, I'm sort of a well-rounded woman at this point, but I think there was mm. a time at my part-time job I had where I got hit on by some sort of crackhead well, meth head, really, meth head trucker. You know, like, no, I'm definitely not going to do that. But I was like, oh, I'm so impressed that he would say these things to me. What? Stop it. Get some help. I would actually say men are into younger women because, you know, men and women, they look at things differently. We look at youth, we look at looks, and then women, they look at, you know, status and, you know, what a man can provide. So that's not to say that a woman also doesn't care about looks, but when asked about why a man goes for younger women, I mean, fertility also comes into play. And for many men, having a beautiful wife, that's one of the main prerequisites. Men, they have all these options because of their status. You know, they're in the top, in the top percent of men. Most of them go for younger women. If they have all these options, why would they go for older women? Historically speaking, biologically speaking, it makes sense that a younger woman is attracted to an older man and that an older man is attracted to a younger woman. You can even look at the animal kingdom for that. That's just how it goes. Nobody wants to be with a scrub. I don't think it's a flex either. And I also think it's, it's kind of BS. Mm. Women don't statistically actually climax during sex, right? I, I find it very mm -hmm. unlikely that she would have been satisfied by majority of these men. And this is 34. Essentially, mm -hmm. she's not just had sex with multiple men, multiple partners. Um, she's had bad sex. She's not even getting mm -hmm. what she could out of the exchange. And that's why, that's why I advocate for long-term relationships when it comes to sex with women. Because it's really hard to figure out what works for your body. And I think it's probably smarter to figure it out with one guy. You can get what you want every time you have sex. You don't need to go find a new guy at a bar. Now, women are sleeping with 25 men before they even get married. And that's if they get married. The problem with getting with all these bad boys, these physically attractive alpha men... You think you can get them when you're young and you play games. You play games until you're 35 and then none of them marry you. TikTok I saw where a woman's like, a man is immature if he cares about your body count. I would argue not. A man only cares, like really cares about your body count if he's serious about you. Like I'll argue, I do not care if I'm just, you know, casually sleeping around a woman, what her body count is. Why do I care? But if I'm trying to be in a serious relationship with her and even Commitment. marry her, I will definitely care what her body count is because her body count dictates to me how likely she is to, you know, remain, remain faithful. And that goes back to also the phenomenon of for men, sex is just sex. And for women, it's actually an emotional connection. So if a woman is able to have so many sexual partners, then she's probably this, probably this emotional connection that usually you develop with a man is probably broken and it's probably not going to happen with you. You know if he's not about it. Like when you're laying there, you're like, okay, it's probably not going to work out later, but I just want to have fun right now. Like you literally turn, you turn the common sense off. Like these chicks know. You met him at a club or a bar. Don't expect this guy to, you know, to be there, to text you back after the first night. I mean, why would a guy do that? He's, guys are there for one sole purpose. They're trying to, you know, pick up chicks and flirts. That's why, because they're trying to have a one night stand. But if you meet a guy at, you know, through a friend or, I don't know, at a library, if that is even possible, then that situation is different because you're in a, in a location where the guy is not searching for, you know, a hookup. Most likely he's just searching to meet a woman and possibly develop something and go on dates. His reputation also, you know. If he's known as the bad boy in high school, why do you think if he hits on you or wants to go on a date with you that he's going to be, you know, actually want a, a, a mature, you know, long-term relationship with you? I am the one, the way you're... Just say, oh, no, he's different. I want to change him. No, like, no, you're not. It's People rarely change. Mm -hmm. If somebody, you know, somebody sleeps around, they're going to sleep around. If somebody is unloyal, they're always going to be unloyal.
because you know they've developed that habit. Sure, in the rare circum- the rare circumstances where a man does a whole 180, but you know most of the time, if he has developed some kind of habit, it's hard to break a habit. I mean, look at how many people have a problem with quitting smoking. She would always be very like very immature where. I would do something wrong, like she wouldn't like it. And then she, instead of communicating that to me, she would just like, storm off and just close herself off in the room. And I'm just standing there like, what did I do? And then I would speak to her and be like, okay, you know, if, if I say something, if I do something, tell me so I understand what I did and then we can talk it through. And she's like, okay, sure, yeah, I'll try. She, she, can, she made all these promises, but, you know, she still continued doing that. Mm-hmm. Or even when she was very clingy, I'm like, okay, you need to, you know, I need space. You know, I, I know you, you like to, you like this attention, you like being clingy, but, you know, I'm a man who enjoys some peace time with myself. I need some space. If I tell you I need space, please give me space. If I say I need to write this essay and once I finish it, you'll get all the cuddles you need. Like, understand that. Don't be like, no, I don't want cuddles now. Like, what the fuck? Or, and then she would say, yeah, okay, I'll try, yeah, I'll work on it. But of course, she would just go back to her habit, to her nature, and just continue doing it. So mm-hmm. that was actually one of the reasons why I broke up with her, because, you know, I can't be in a relationship with someone so mature. If I said, please do this, please understand, please respect my boundaries, and if you don't respect my boundaries, why should I even consider being with you? 